<laughs> oh shoot where's my stop button <laughs> hey what's happening everybody it's friday night time for a thrifting haul what is going on i am joined by my special co-host of last night robin it's like we never left hello robin <laughs> Hi. <laughs> 24 hours later, we're right back where we were. Actually, 23 hours later. Wow. What's happening, everybody? How is everyone doing? Uh, tonight is going to be a fun haul. It's a, a two-parter. It is uh, what we acquired in Europe. Do -do -do -do. And by pure luck, I went out uh, Halloween costume shopping at the thrift stores, and every single Savers had vintage denim. And I'm going to show a few other things, too. But the vintage denim is what we're really going to get into because I found some cool shit. And uh, y'all know Joy Williams, my lifeguard, my jean expert. She was excited, and I got one pair I actually need help on. So I look forward to showing you guys all the denim. What's up with you, Robin? How was your day? It was good. I was busy. I was, uh, I was working. I was listing, editing, photo taking. How many listings did you get up today? Pardon me? How many listings did you get up today? Oh, I did like five right before the show. That's it? Five? Well, yeah, because I had to take the photos and I had to edit. And then I was doing domestic goddess stuff, you know, laundry, making my bed. <laughs> making my bed. Who makes their bed? Um, this girl. <laughs> All right. So question for the chat before we get, get into it. Am I the only one hearing Robot Robin? Because if I am, it's cool. But if you guys are hearing it, we got to figure it out. Because we didn't hear Robot Robin last night. So, yeah, sound sucks. Okay. Now, is the sound suck on both of us or just Robin? I hate to uh, I hate to fix things live on the air. But, hey, that's when we find out that, uh, that they're not going well. So, is it just Robin or is it Robin and Jason? <laughs> I'm the Robot. Ah, crap. All right. I'm going to try one thing here, Robin. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disappear for a quick sec. I'll be right back. Okay. Do you want me to keep talking? <laughs> yes, please. Hear me pop you up. There you go. Start talking. Yay. Okay, everybody. So uh, I'm taking over the show while Jason and I get this stuff together. <laughs> All right. So uh, I'm drinking iced coffee in my mug. What are y'all right, drinking? So, oh, you're back, Robin. I want you to. I want you. I want you to refresh, Robin. You want me to refresh? Okay, I'll be right back. Bye. -bye. Yep. All right. So I changed a little something. Do I sound any better? If not, I will change one more thing. Okay, now, Susan said you sound great. Just Robin. Yeah, I know Robin's. Robin's sound was shitty before we started. Then it was good, and then as soon as we went live, it went back to. Pfft. Here comes Robin. Hi. Oh, much better. Much better. All right, cool. Let's get into this, shall we? All right. So, what I think? Yes, I'm please. Do, let's do it. What, what? What? What, my dear? I said yes. Let's do it. Okay. So, what I think I'm going to do is uh, we're going to break this into three parts. What I when I thrifted the other day, uh, these are the things that are non-denim. Uh, I'm going to show you the few things that I found. <laughs> no. So you can leave and you can come back. Get out. Get out, Stacey. Beat a kid. <laughs> all right. So for all of you who say you never find tiki, it's everywhere. Found a tiki mug yesterday while I was out thrifting. Found a tiki candle holder nice. while I was out thrifting. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Uh, of all the shit we have in our house, we've never had one of these. So... So that's cool. cool. So yeah, they were there sitting there, two ninety nine, and this was a buck ninety nine, and I had twenty percent off. This is a common mug. It's not worth a lot, but you can usually get about ten bucks for it. And I usually usually use it as filler in a bigger lot of tiki mugs. <clears throat> that goes over there. All right. Uh, I don't think this has ever been used. This is a nice Roxy uh, like carry on piece of luggage. Nine ninety nine, uh, oh, eight, eight bucks. Uh, looking on the inside is fully lined, so like if you're doing your makeup and stuff. Uh, but there is no dirt or markings on the inside at all, so I don't think this was ever used. 
uh, eight dollars probably can get about forty bucks if it doesn't get sucked up by my wife or Robin or somebody else. By the, <laughs> by the way, every single thing you see here, except for a couple, and I'll tell you when, uh, is for sale. So if there's something that uh, tickles your fancy while you're watching tonight, if you're watching live on Friday night, or if you're watching after the fact. Feel free to hit me up. You can message me on YouTube. Obviously, it's very easy to message me on uh, Facebook. Uh, uh, I am Jason T. Smith. Super duper easy. So if you like anything, now this is a this is a pretty fun mug. It is a Jimmy Carter mug. Our Jimmy. <laughs> oh, I love it. Isn't that Our great? Jimmy. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. And at some point, it had its original sticker on it. And then someone priced it at five bucks, and then Savers sold it for four bucks. Nice. So that is a kind of cute. Now, uh, do you know the blankets I always talk about, Robin? Yes, with San Marcos. Well, uh, here comes Robot Robin. Crapola. Yes. Now there's another brand too. So San Marcos is one brand, and Beaterlac is the other brand. Cool. So keep your eyes peeled for both those brands. And if you've never seen these blankets, which way is up? Which way is up? They're usually big, warm, and they have some type of animal on them. Oh, nice. So this one isn't as big as some that I've sold. This is probably like a twin size, but I paid eight bucks and I'll probably get about $50 for it. So Beaterlac and San Marcos blankets, they are awesome. Now, in the Halloween section is where you find things that aren't really costumes, but could be. So if you're going to rock the 80s look, you could do it in this badass sweater. <laughs> I love it. Is this awesome or what? Yes. Yeah, Stacy said, anyone watch the Goldbergs? This is straight up. Yeah, this is awesome. Now, how, how, do I describe, how do I describe this, Robin? Just swirls? What would you write? Swirls like multicolored swirls. So that was a, no, no, that was a size small. So if anyone who is interested in this, who's a size small, let me know. This girl, that would be a thigh. <laughs> now going going from the eighties straight into the nineties, this jacket has sat in the closet since probably nineteen ninety three. Still new with tags. Oh, yeah. Bam. Look at that. <gasps> Killer. <laughs> Look at that. And uh, where's my little buttons here? Yeah. It's Get got heart-shaped heart buttons. and Oh, pinwheels. Pinwheels. I like that. Uh, and this brand, Levon, this jacket is just so, uh, a black version of this jacket, not new with tags, sold for 40 bucks, And I paid uh, $6. But this one still has the original Levon tag on it, size medium. Ooh. It also has the original price tag on it, too. It was $49. Nice. Wow. So, again, not tr really a costume, but it can pass as a costume. But, yeah, I'm going to sell the hell out of this. So, so, some grandma's going to love wearing this to, to uh, Vegas to play her bingo. Oh, it doesn't have to be grandma. It could be Robin. Oh, sorry, buddy. Some unicorn. <laughs> now, Robin, you are going to absolutely love this. Okay. Yay. <laughs> Throw on. We throws on. I don't know what it is. <laughs> oh, I love when he does this, guys. Yay. It's yay. awesome. So I'll let Stacy put it on real quick so she'll model it. Okay. She'll yay. Model it. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So write this down. Get your pen. Get your paper out. Write this tip down especially this time of year, the PJ section, when you get like onesies, but don't use the term onesie, uh, or with feet that are specific things like unicorns, Superman, those are easy costumes. So although they're normally pajamas, the rest of the year, this time of year, they're pajamas and they're a costume. So we always, we always hit the PJ section hard. So here's some uh, stuff that uh, isn't for costumes uh, uh, specifically, but uh, Phineas and Ferb is a cartoon. Oh, and, yay. And this is the platypus from it. But what's cool is this is from the Disney parks. Nice, Jason. All right. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Come on over here. Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Roper. Look at this <laughs> awesomeness. 
<laughs> Give us a spin, hon. It still smells like Mrs. Roper. <laughs> Give us a spin. Oh my god, I love it. Stacy, you know I'd so rock that. <laughs> But what's great, come closer. What's great is it's really metallic. So that's yeah, what you, like. There's like, yeah, oh it is my awesome. Yeah. Oh my. Oh my Isn't God, it's great? beautiful. <laughs> All right. I love you. it. Thank you, thank you, my dear. Now, oh my God, you know I totally rock that. Oh, I know. When you find anything Disney parks that is that is like the, the top level. So, you know, Disney, Disney store, Disney catalog, Disney parks, people want uh, want the Disney park stuff. So staying in the PJ section, y'all know it, y'all love it. Nick and Nora is a great brand. <laughs> Where am I going here? Nick and Nora is a great brand to buy. These are just the pants, but they're Santa Claus pants. So, you know. Oh, they're cute. You get about $18 for them. Uh, Kim Gordon called you Fox Vanilla. What size is that? Is there a size tag in there? It's just like, what, it's like, I think it's, it's really kind of moo mooish. I think it's just like one size. Yeah, it might be just one size. No, sticking oh, I'm so in, buying that. Sticking in the Santa theme, how about Naughty Mrs. Claus in the lingerie section? Oh. And and it comes with the panties. Ooh. Oh, nice job, Jason. And what I what I love, Robin, what I absolutely love, see these panties? They are marked extra large. Yes, <laughs> they call those panties. Nice. <laughs> Uh, and these are new with hey, tags. Hey, that's important. Th these are new with tags still. Why didn't you ask me to try that? Nice. Would you like to try this on, honey? <laughs> it's too big for Stacey. She's yeah. But uh, oh. Uh, oh, what size was the Phineas? The Phineas and Fur pants were extra large. Uh, and then we grabbed, you know, it's not all that exciting, but it's a vintage nightgown. It's got the union label in it. And uh, so, you know what, you know, this also could be turned into a great Halloween costume with some blood, holding a knife, you know, kind of thing. Damsel. Oh, no, dress. Jason, sell it with, like, to the pinups. The pinups love that kind of stuff. Oh, I will, but it's Halloween time. So we're going to try, you know, anything can be in costume. What are you uh, drinking? Arizona tea? Uh, Bud Light Lime, but close. <laughs> Arizona tea. <laughs> because that's tea colored. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what else it looks like. <laughs> yeah, see. All right, Nick and Nora. Now, I don't normally find Nick and Nora uh, silk pajamas, so that's pretty cool. These are double X, and they're rubber duckies, and I got both set, the whole oh set. Oh, my. Super cute. Yep. yep, so that's pretty cool. I meet you now, by the way. And then last but not least, and Stacy's going to love this, and I bet a bunch of you watch right now is going to love this too, homemade uh, in the PJ section. Look at this. It's all mushrooms. Oh my wallpaper when I was growing up. How cool is that? That is crazy. Yeah, there, there's a few little marks on it, but for the vintageness, it is bitching. It is absolutely bitching. That's cool. I gave it to you, you gave it back. Oh yeah, where is it? What is it? The shirt. I don't remember what shirt it is. The Lily. Oh, you didn't give it to me. Well, I gave it to you. You didn't tell me that was for me. Yes. No. You said that you wouldn't be able to. All right. We'll, we'll talk later. Can you go see if you can find it? It's downstairs. No, no. You didn't give it to me. All right. So I've told this story a million times. I'm going to tell it one more time for those of you who have not heard. Lot 29 is the brand. I don't know if they did anything besides uh, a whole line of Warner Brothers characters, but this is obviously Daffy Duck. So they did pants and they right. did shirts. And one time, Robin, I sold a Lot 29 Sylvester t shirt. And the guy made me an offer of $19.99 free shipping. I took it. He got it and then wrote me and wondered where his other 28 t-shirts were. Dude, it's not a lot of 29. It is lot 29. And he really thought he got 29 Warner Brothers t-shirts with free shipping for $20. Come on now. Come on now. That's crazy. And this is a, this is a triple X. So anyone watching who's a big Daffy fan, this is a triple X shirt. And then last, last thing I'm going to show before we do, jump into Europe, uh, something I've shared many times, but those of you may be new uh, to watching, uh, the Dive Bar, thank you, the Dive Bar of the Month t-shirt club, and it looks like this. Oh, yeah. You, know, you want to grab any one you find because it is from some cool dive bar in the country, but they only make this shirt one month and then it's retired. And so any fan of this dive bar will like it. Every one I get, I sell pretty quickly. 
And so okay. the bar itself is not important. It's the fact that it's from the Dive Bar T-shirt club. So keep that in mind. Hey, Jay, wait, wait, Jay, hold it back up. It was it was off camera a little bit. Like I said, the shirt itself don't matter all that much. Oh. Still kind of cool. But nice. it's just anything from the Dive Bar T-shirt club. <clears throat> Uh, Angelique, you said, why couldn't it be a three or four X? You're talking about the Daffy shirt? Cause that is a three X. So if that's something you'd like. Um, but, uh, my, my assistant, Sophia and I are walking out. We're done. We're walking out, Robin. We're down, we're going down the girl aisle to check out. And I'm like, uh, oh, check this out. And I snag your shirt out of the girl aisle. I'm like, look, Lily. I'm like, oh no, it's chaps. <laughs> but they made it look like <laughs> Lily. And then, so, so right towards the end though. Oh, look, Lily. Oh my gosh, wait. The front, Jay? No, it's frogs. And a zebra no. and no flamingos. But here's the bummer. You ready? Some fool cut the tag out. Oh. So the buttons all say Lily, so I'm all good with that. But it's a bummer when you're missing a yeah. tag, especially on a good brand like a Lily. Yeah. But you're already thinking about reselling. Yeah, you tried it on to see. No, I did. You we held it up and you said it's probably too big for me. Remember you that whole conversation? For me. Yes. The whole Lily story. No. I don't want it. Uh, <laughs> mom, mom's asking what size. Ma, I just told you the tag's cut out. I have no idea what size it's, it is. It's probably a medium. Maybe a little uh, it's short. Yeah, so it's yeah, the yeah. So uh Angelique, hit me up. I'll uh, I'll take care of you. Hit me up after the show. So all right, let's get into Europe. So here's the deal. There was plenty to buy. We went to, actually, let's share some pictures, shall we? Let's start with pictures. Yes. This is yes. a fun picture show, too. Oops, that was from last night's show, last night's show. Okay. So we had flown uh, from the United States to London, spent a couple hours bouncing around <laughs> London bars, and went to bed, got up, and took another flight to Amsterdam. And the second we got to the hotel, we then hopped on a train down to Rotterdam because we were meeting a friend in Rotterdam for drinks. And then heading, heading over to another town called The Hague to meet some, a friend for drinks. But we had to walk a little bit of a distance from the train. And if you can see my glasses, they are covered in rain spots. So we we're walking in the rain. And as you can see, Stacy looks thrilled. <laughs> but hey, we made it to the store we were going to. It's called uh, Tony's, garage yeah, Tony's Garage Sale. And Very if cool. by chance your travels ever take you to uh, Rotterdam, Stop by Tony's. It's a really cool place. I even like it. Even Stace liked it. And uh, look, she's even smiling. See, we got, whoops, let me put that back up there. We got there and she is smiling. And then we, I was out of the rain. Yeah, plus we we're out of the rain. Plus, look, look at the cool stuff in here. I should have taken a picture, Robin. The lamp above Stacy, had it been anywhere in the United States, we would have bought it for sure because it was a bitchin' lamp. Yeah. And then I, I did a little like, you know, sexy corner <laughs> pose there. <laughs> All right, so the person, uh, oh, the person, I read a word over there. The two things we <laughs> bought there, or three. Oh, yeah. Three things, I right? haven't even seen that, you guys. Like, yeah. oh, this is fun for me, too. So this is the first thing I bought, and I'm pretty sure it's European Disney. <gasps> I found that one. Bing. Yeah, so I asked Bridget, Bridget, the lifeguard for the thrifting board. She knows her Disney, and she had not seen this specific tag before. And it says uh, Disney on the back, but it is in a medium, not not European sizing, but it's super cute and super cool. So I will have to do a little more research in that. And then at the same, Stacy found, found that one. <laughs> and then at the same store, you're gonna make me sit here. I'm getting credit. Is this uh, Mickey Mouse purse? Egg inside says Disney Sweden on it. Oh, super cute. Yeah. There's not a Disney in Sweden, but apparently they're manufacturing some stuff in Sweden. And then we found the kick-ass bracelet. Now, if you know my wife, if you've hung out with my wife at all, and, we, and especially if we're at an event or a function, she always has fun jewelry on. She has tons and tons of fun jewelry. Uh, luckily, I married a woman who likes fun jewelry and not like gaudy jewelry. You mean expensive? Yeah. <laughs> so she's going to show you this kick-ass bracelet that we found at uh, Tony's Garage Sale. <laughs> It's so bomb. So look how, look at that. It is big and meaty. Love it. Isn't that cool? 
And it wasn't expensive. Nothing was. Yeah. Uh, I think six, whatever they used six to. six euros. I think the purse was eight or ten, and the and the sweatshirt was like six or seven. So nothing was expensive. And uh, yes, the purse is leather. And uh, you know she's keeping the the bracelet, but I'm going to flip obviously the other two things. All right, so we then got back and spent uh, a day in Amsterdam with our friends. And then we headed off to Lille, France for the oldest still ongoing flea market in the world. Oh, I just, I just got paid for a shirt. How nice. Nice. And this, this flea market has been going on since the 1100s. Wow. And it's huge. And the town of Lille is about, uh, the population is like two, two or 300,000. And for the weekend, 2 million people show up because it's, it's the flea market. Stacy did a 10 K. Uh, it's also a mussels festival, the, the seafood that you eat. And so they go through 500 ton of muscle in that weekend and muscles. If That's you've not great. eaten muscles, they don't weigh nothing. Mm -mm. They okay. So you said 2 million people? people. Yeah. So I gotta know, because every time I'm with you, somebody calls you out from the thrift hunters calls me. So out. I know it, ha it had to. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, when uh, Stacy was running her race, we were walking around. I was with our other friends, Anna and Michael. <clears throat> Actually, I think I have a picture here. Oh, do you? Oh, my gosh, that's awesome. Hang on, I'll get, I'll get back to those. Yep. So, yeah, I was digging through some stuff, and this guy came up and said, Thrift Hunters? <laughs> oh, my God, that is so awesome. And I'm like, yeah, so he took a picture of me, and I go, can I take a picture of you? Because I'm going to use it. <laughs> and then I got I got I got recognized uh, two more times, and all three people were from different countries. So everyone from around Europe uh, came down to this flea market to hunt. Now, <clears throat> you're funny. You're funny, Kim. Oops, going back too much. <laughs> so uh, some fun things we saw: nine hundred two one zero Pello in the middle of France, make America great again hats in France, <laughs> <laughs> and then this was the scene up and down streets wow. forever. If you took the entire festival and stretched it out, now it's not all used stuff. A lot of stores use it as a good time to clear out their stuff from the summertime. But if you stretch it all out, it was like 47 straight miles of uh, shopping, like sidewalk sale shopping. So crazy. Yeah. And just, as you can see, the people just go on and on and on. And there's, there's Anna Hill. Y'all know Anna from the thrifting yeah. board and from, and from uh, Secret Beach. And then we saw some fun stuff, like an entire tub full of gas masks and one half of a face. <laughs> and then oh, these little kid oh mannequins having a little powwow. And this was how this was all set up. I did not stage this. This was sitting just like this. <laughs> oh, my. Huh. <laughs> and I got my boat, and I'm going home. <laughs> Taking my boat. That's kind of a kick-ass boat, though, Jay. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know, but I wanted to show that picture because I'm going to show you stuff. We didn't buy a lot, and, and there's a couple of reasons. Uh, you know, if you buy it, you got to deal with it. And we, from that point to the end of the trip, we had three more train rides. And to schlep crap around, you know, to the train station, around the trains, we definitely want to make sure we were buying stuff that we could either A, flip, or B, that we wanted. Uh, you know, had had we had this been in, like, Pasadena at the Rose Bowl, I definitely would have bought more stuff. But I would have had my truck I could throw in the back. So um, let's, uh, let's do it this way. Okay, so uh, I bought a lot of music. I'll save that for a second. So let's talk a little bit about the music I bought. And uh, I bought uh, – the one thing about France and, and, and uh, Europe in general, they have tons of music. I've never seen so much CDs and records and 45s at flea markets, at garage sales, at secondhand stores. You don't see in the States like that, which is crazy. But Europe loved music, and they loved the CD single. I saw so many CD singles everywhere I went. But there are there is good stuff to have. This is – uh, I, uh, this is a French seven inch single of the theme song to star Wars. That is cool. And, uh, yeah. And I pay 10, 10 euros for it and I can probably get, uh, anywhere from 30 to 50 for it. So that's, that's what the label looks like. Yeah, there we go. 
So it's pretty neat to find, you know, very popular things like Star Wars uh, in another language. Those all always do quite well. So then I also bought a bunch of records. And uh, Prince is still selling well. This is Dirty Mind. Uh, oh, this yeah. is easy to acquire. Get about 10, 12 bucks for it. I paid uh, uh, two euros for it. But Diamonds and Pearls is a little bit harder to come by. And this has been selling from anywhere from uh, 35 to 55 bucks. And I, I paid uh, a couple bucks for that. And it's impossible, obviously, to show you on a show uh, without being in person. But but the cardboard in Europe is different than the cardboard in the United States. And once you know the feel and the difference, Robin, as you're even if you don't know music, as you're flipping through, you can feel the difference. The cardboard in Europe is uh, thinner, but it's got a higher sheen gloss to it, whereas American cardboard's got a little bit of a rougher feel to it. Okay. So. Ohio players, uh, pick this up for a couple bucks. It'll sell for about twenty, twenty-two dollars. Cool. Uh, and then I'm gonna put your uh, put your tiki skills to the test now, Robin. Do you know who this is? Oops, let me get out of the plastic so it's easier to see. Oh, I was like, wait, wait, what? Wait, who? Y Yama Sama? What? <laughs> what? Oh, that's, this was even better than I expected. Yama Sama. <laughs> I have no idea, Jay. Uh, can I get a clue from Stacy? <laughs> no. I can't even give you a clue on this one. It's Ema Sumac, oh. and she is one of the sounds you would expect, one of the singers you'd expect to hear at a tiki bar. So when we're done, if you guys don't know Ema Sumac, check her out. She was, uh, she yeah. was, depending on how old you are, you might know her. If not, your, your, your mother or grandparents knew Ema. Cool. All right, and you ready for the best record I found? Yes, yes. Now, most of you know, and if you don't know, I'll tell you right now, our home tiki bar is called the Den of Sin, and we have as a logo uh, a devil tiki. And so besides tiki stuff, I do look for a little bit of devil things to put in my home tiki bar, and this record is called The Rite of the Exorcism. Oh, that is sick. Jason. So this is um, this was done by a reverend, and it's all about how to have an exorcism. What? <laughs> I did pay thirty. I did pay thirty for it. I can flip it for sixty if it isn't any good. But we are going to give it a listen to. So. Oh, nice. All right, all right, robot. I want you to uh, refresh for me, please, and then I'll uh, continue on. So refresh and come on back. Okay. Thank you, my dear. Uh, she was looking a little roboty. All right, so now we're going to get into CDs, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you my stacks. Uh, all right, so here's all the CDs, bloop, 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 bloop. but I'm going to highlight a few, uh, some things that you can find pretty easily, and other things just to show you there's plenty of money and uh, meat to be made out there. Uh, <laughs> Brian said that has to be the best album cover ever. Oh, yeah, yeah, and when the wife said, you're spending 32 on that, I go, hell yeah, because you don't find that album cover all that often. Okay. Now, Robin, have you sold CDs? Sold one so far. <laughs> Let's listen to Jimmy wants to listen to it right now. <laughs> okay. So one of the keys to buying and selling CDs is you, you typically, typically aren't going to buy the popular artists. There's got to be 10 bazillion of Billy Joel River of Dreams. So it's it's a penny CD. Normally. Yeah. I say normally. And if you looked at the back of this, you would think it's just the regular CD. There's 10 cuts on it, no big deal. But if you read this little thing okay. down here, it says includes free special limited edition live eight track CD. So this is actually a bonus double CD. So you got your regular CD and you got your bonus live CD. So that makes this a very rare version of it. And it's going to sell in the neighborhood of uh, maybe $40. So if you're flipping fast, you might not notice because you should never, ever stop on the CD unless you find the two-disc version. That's when you stop. I paid uh, two uh, pounds for that. Uh, yeah. Also, again, REM document and REM Life's Rich, Life's Rich Pageant aren't all that exciting. They're, they're, again, penny CDs. However, Robin, they never come packaged together. It was tough to find this. And I have this listed for $70 and I paid two pounds for it. 
What? Which is about bucks? two pounds is about uh, two dollars and sixty cents. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. That's, what? That's $3. And someone did seven bucks. Yeah, as someone said, did you try and bargain? Yeah, we bargained a couple of places. I'm gonna show you one thing that the guy wouldn't bargain on, but I still had to buy it. Um, again, you won't find this CD, but uh, I paid two pounds, and it's worth forty five bucks. Uh, but here's something you would could see. Diana Ross and the Supremes. Uh, right. Again, see, when you see this whoop, special edition, yeah. you should stop and scan it. Typically, yeah. those are imports. Typically, they're not widely available. So you get some good money. So this is going to sell for about $40. And it's a single CD that I paid two pounds for. That's so crazy. Now, I didn't know who the Washington, Washington Dead Cats were. But, uh, you know, a little oh. hula girl losing her skirt, holding her ukulele, and it's sealed. I'm like, oh, I'll give this a whirl because I might like it to listen to. Uh, but this is a, a, a rare album of theirs, and it's going to sell for about 50 bucks. So I will not open it, but I did listen to them on YouTube, and they're a rockabilly band that I'm pretty sure is singing phonetically. So I'm not sure what country they're from, but by their sound, oh. I think they're just singing because someone taught them the words. Oh, Susan, that's a great question. Were you able to scan in Europe? So yes, I paid 10 bucks a day to be able to use my phone as normal. And it worked fine. I scanned everywhere. But here's the tip. Here's where I made a little mistake. What was scanning was not the US Amazon. It was the Europe Amazon. And so a few things I bought would do well in Europe aren't doing so well in the United States. And I did not realize that till late in the game. And I'm like, oh, whoops. <laughs> but I'll still make good money. Uh, yeah. Uh, John Fogarty, y'all should know him from Korean's Clearwater Revival. This version of the CD goes for 35 bucks. I paid two. Now, this one, I did not know who Matador was. Uh, but again, it looked cool. And I've touched a million CDs probably in my career of CDs. And this one's gonna sell for uh, this is gonna sell for about seventy five dollars. So wow. I, paid, I paid two bucks. Now here's somebody That's y'all know. Question. Yes, of course. Okay, so you know you know when you go to CD shops here in the United States and they have those huge tables and you just go through them like a thousand seconds in a minute, like it's just crazy. Is it set up the same way in Europe? Did, were you able to do your normal? Oh yeah, yeah. There? So I, I can flip. Uh, I can flip pretty fast through the CDs, and uh, you know, if you if you're new to it, you're you'll have to scan everything. But I can see things, and when I see things like this Elvis uh, two on one, I realize that although these were commercially available, they didn't they were later in the CD game, and they didn't sell all that well. And so I paid uh, I paid four pounds for it, and it's going to sell for forty five dollars. So uh, things like this. I had no idea what Honey West was. It's a soundtrack uh, to a movie or show, TV show starring Anne Francis. Don't know her, but uh, it caught my eye. You know, you know what caught my eye, Robin? The funky font and the fact that I'd never seen it. So a quick scan showed me that this was a twenty-five dollars CD. So I would happily pay six bucks for twenty-five. Because again, yeah, li yeah, yeah. listing CDs are easy, uh, and then shipping CDs are easy because they're tiny. Yes. All right. Uh, and then I'm going to show two more things. This is a big bolo. It's an easy bolo to find. So I'm going to pause and say, get out your pen and paper, everybody. Do, do, let's see. Do we have any more pictures to show? Here I am with just, in, you know, entertaining myself, doing selfies, and no one's paying attention to me. <laughs> that must be so discouraging. <laughs> uh, and what was nice was it was kind of warm there. As you can see, people are in short sleeves and stuff. But a lot of the streets we walked down were these huge tree lined yeah. streets. So it was kind of it was yeah. kind of cool. Oh, my mom watched that show. My mom knows this show. I never even heard of it. That's so cool. Okay, so here's what you're going to write down. This is Slipknot, one of the most awesome bands of all time. And this is their first major release. And what happened was they had two songs on it that they wrote based on a short story they read and they were told they would be okay to write music on this short story unfortunately they got bad information the second the album got released the author or whoever owned the right said hey what the hell you can't do that without permission 
So the CD had to be pulled, and they had to yank the two songs off it. So the two songs you're looking for are track uh, eight and nine. They're called Frail Limb Nursery and Purity. So everything else looks the same as the normal Slipknot album. The cover didn't change. Nothing else changed except the songs went bye-bye. So when you pull this up and you see this in a thrift store, if it's got 15 tracks and eight and nine is Frail Limb Nursery and Purity, that's your winner. You can get any, depending on the time and the year, 30 to $50. Wow. 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 How, oh, people are asking how you ship CDs? No, not medium mail, because CDs only weigh four ounces. You ship them first class. You ship them first class in a number number zero bubble mailer. And what's nice is they just slide right in. Boom, done. That's the joys of buying and selling CDs because they don't take up a lot of space and they and they ship quickly. Hey. Yeah, exactly. Metallica's Kill Em All is also missing a few songs and good money there. Yes, Robin. No, I just said yay. Okay, so the next album, I'm going to give you the uh, R-rated warning right now. I'm not going to say the word, but I'm going to describe the word because this band is a huge bolo. However, the, the name of the band's a little rough. All right, it's a little rough. As you can see, it says AC on the side. The... <laughs> <laughs> The A stands for anal, and the C stands for the worst word you could call you could call a woman. Kind of like runt, but get rid of the R. See you next Tuesday. Yeah, see you next Tuesday. So, so, and I'll show you the logo of the band, as you can see what the A and the C are. But I show you this, and I tell you this not to shock you. This is worth one hundred and fifty dollars. What? what? <laughs> now, if you go look up this band on eBay when we're done and go to the solds, there's a 20, there's a 40, there's a 100, there's a 50, there's another 50. Obviously, with that kind of name, you don't sell a lot of records. But <laughs> when the people want it, they will pay dearly. And I had never seen this album. I, I knew the band. I know the band. They're, they're, they're brutal. I would YouTube them, too. You'll last about three and a half seconds, and you'll be like, I'm out. I'm out. No, Jimmy, but I like them. Now. They're such a speed metal band. Now, uh, okay, Slipknot. Slipknot had 15 songs. Uh, this Honey West thing had 12 songs. Uh, Matador had 12 songs. There are 52 songs on one CD. <laughs> what? A CD only holds 80 minutes. So in 80 minutes, there is 52 songs. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. <laughs> so again, didn't tell you to shock you, but did tell you that it's big, big money when you find it. And because it doesn't say the two words ever on the CD, I don't think ever. Yeah, just the AC. You might not notice it and you might just cruise on by. But if you cruise on by, you leave 150 bucks and I paid $2 for this. That is so crazy. But yes, you do list them using the name. So later, when we're done, go to eBay, type in those two words, CD, sold, and you'll see all the solds. All right. So a couple more things from Europe, and then we'll get on to uh, the vintage denim. We went to a very cool uh, vintage store that uh, unfortunately didn't have anything all that great. But I love when you find things like this. Like, how did Robin, how did this get to, I think we are in Paris. Right? That that store we went downstairs underground to. Oh, I can't wait to see what it is, Jay. I can't wait to see what it is, Jay. Yes, you were. Was I with you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this is from 19... <laughs> this was 1993. <laughs> All the tags still intact. Uh, it is a Looney Tunes Phoenix Suns baseball hat. Uh, basketball hat, sorry. What? what? Huh. So there's a, there's a Looney Tunes tag. There's the official license, NBA products, Phoenix Suns, Bugs Bunny, and uh, 1993. But still has all the tags. And I've done my research, Robin, cannot find this hat anywhere. But other hats in this line are in the $40 to $50 range. Yeah, the fact I that I can't high. find this one, uh, I'm going to put it definitely higher. And, yeah, that was in uh, Paris. Does this fit you? I don't know. Will you try it? That kick-ass dress? 
And then we're going to show you a dress and two bags, and then we're going to finish up with denim. Oh, yeah. So the first thing I bought, Robin, and I don't know uh, if you're going to know what this is, but we're going to test the audience. You ready? Okay. Okay. What can you uh, – this is a, a travel bag, the kind you would take on an air travel. What can you tell me about this airline? Oceanic. Huh. All right, let's see who my uh, pop culture nerds are in the chat, and let's see who uh, let's see who knows who Oceanic Airlines is. And while we're waiting, I see the discussion of using cardboard on CDs. Typically, no, but when it goes overseas, I will use some cardboard. Oh, bam! Huh, yeah, Alicia, Caitlin, Michelle, everyone got it. Yes, this is the fic fictional airline from the TV show Lost, and this was the first thing I found in Lille. It's got the little, we're in the water whistle still on it. It's It's got all its tags. It's got some fun tags in there. It, this is a great bag. And again, something, Robin, I cannot find. There's like Yay. none listed or sold lately. So I am very excited. Me too. All right. So you can pay top dollar at vintage stores if you can get topper dollar. Does that make sense? <laughs> so wait, I paid 30 bucks for this dress. I can get 100 Yeah, we paid thirty dollars for this dress, and I can get at least a hundred bucks for it. So come on over, Stace. Nice. Uh, you got to back up because you. Oh, the, yeah, you got to. Yeah, because look at the tiki's on Hold it. On. <laughs> what? All right, now walk forward. Oh my gosh! Oh my right. gosh! Oh my gosh! Turn around. Yeah. So in that bitching. It's, it's totally in a, cool. It's in immaculate shape. Uh, and wow. I, I was happy to pay it because that was one of the best finds. Uh, I might be able to get 150 for that dress. That dress is. Oh, I would definitely awesome. go 150, Jay. And a good, great question, uh, Susan. Did you have to? Uh, How did you bring back all these treasures? Did you have to declare value and customs? Absolutely. Now I didn't go nutty. I just wrote, you know, 50 CDs at 100 bucks or whatever, and then you know, a couple purses, a dress, you know. <laughs> And then two bracelets. So this is Stacy's other kick-ass bracelet. Look at this vintage piece. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Oh, it's so lovely. Yeah, yeah. and this was uh, only t uh, $2. Wow. Whoop. Oh, yeah, this, <laughs> this dress is uh, made in Hawaii. So. Yeah, the dress is made in Hawaii. Now, sometimes, and I warn you all not to do this, don't shop emotionally. Don't sell emotionally. Pay attention. When you find something so exciting, Sour Puss is a great brand of purse. <laughs> Definitely good in the rockabilly crowd. And this is so badass. It is. Oh, my gosh. But you know what's not badass, Robin? Is the handle that's about to tear off. Oh, shit. I mean, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we got, it was $4. Like, yeah. And then I got home and I'm like, oh. Hey, I'm gonna try to fix that for you. Oh my god, we need to. Like, All right. Oh my god, we need to save that purse. <laughs> All right, let's. Uh, let me show you a couple more pictures, then we'll finish up with denim. So here's a couple more shots. Oh, yeah, let me look. I want to see too. Now, uh, what, what what I want to make note of here is how they have the hand set up. They basically have the hand where his junk should be. <laughs> Can oh I god, give you my good. hand? And then, wow. if you all didn't see my post, this is the exact look that Stacy gives when she's done thrifting. <laughs> it's only totally it. This is the exact look that Stacy's like, I'm out. Oh, God, that's funny. <laughs> uh, and this is Jeannie Fleming. Jeannie's been a, a member of the thrifting board and then uh, thrifting with the boys before that. She was in France for this uh, specific uh a flea market and we met up uh by accident in two million people robin we bumped no, into each other awesome. and so cool. then we actually drank later at tiki bar but this is this is this is genie's friend and this is how you carry a lot of shit all at once you just tape the hell out of it and drag it around <laughs> that's so awesome and then this is later on in the evening apparently when your stuff doesn't sell it, it it wasn't good enough to sell, so people. This is a dumpster. People just threw their stuff away. Like a minute ago, it was worth five five euro. Now it's just trash. Oh my gosh! You know the dumpster divers in our group would be like, "Wait, 
No kidding. Uh, I saw this sign in a secondhand store, buy now or cry later. I like that. <laughs> I love it. Oh, my God, what fun photos. And then this was the um, uh, uh, car boot sale in London that we finished up at. I'm gonna, and the first thing I saw when I walked in, if you all watch Thrifty Business, you will know that this was my score from, I think, the episode right before we left from Europe was this radio. And I sold it for $73. And I bought one in Europe for $10. Oh, cool. Now, I, I try to haggle. And the guy's like, no, it's worth $10. <laughs> And he wound it up and he made it work for me. And I'm like, come on, dude, eight, nine, give me a deal. I still gave him the 10 because I just sold him for 73. Now it works. This condition of this box is a little less than my other one, but I'm still going to get about 60 bucks for it. Cause I actually think mine sold so quick. I might've underpriced it at 73. Well, it was new when this came out for 59 uh, pounds. Wow. Is that it? Other than denim? You should buy the bracelet. Yeah, I showed you the other bracelet. All right, let's get to denim. Ooh, yeah. All right, how are we going to do this? Uh, I think I'll have you hold it up and stand here. Okay. Yeah, so bring bring that. You know, I want I want you guys to see this denim in full. So I'm going to have Stace help me out, kind of be my Vanna White. Grab a pair and hold it up. Yeah, I, I have them in the order I want them. So just straight on down. Okay, so... You should be looking for denim, uh, modern stuff and vintage stuff. And so uh, the first pair, these are vintage Wranglers. So hold them straight up so we can see the bottom too. The one thing you want to look for is the bottom of the cuffs. You want to make sure they're in good shape. Now, they don't have to be in good shape. You just need to describe them. And depending on what it is, if you're buying skater stuff or like Jenkos, distressed is fine. Now, Wranglers, Cowboys, they want their shit correct. So you want to make sure they're nice and tight. Made in the USA, vintage Wranglers. Now, vintage Wranglers aren't worth a super ton. At least these are worth. But I pay like four, five, five bucks, and I'll probably get like thirty-five dollars for them, and they're a decent size. You try and put them yeah, right in that tub, baby. And then uh, hey, just hand me those next couple. They're all together. These two. Yep. Cool. And you know we've talked about them a bazillion times, but I'll just show you. They're still out there and easy to find. Silver tabs, Levi silver tabs, and there are a whole bunch of different ones. These are low and loose. These are baggy. Now, baggy is what people really want. They don't make right. silver tabs anymore, in case you're wondering why they're popular. And people who buy them swear that the denim is different in these jeans compared to other jeans, and that's why they want them. So, uh, low, and then another pair of low and loose. So, a bunch of different silver tab labels, uh, and tons of different labels. So, don't worry about fakes i've never seen fake silver tabs i'm sure there is but i've never seen them <laughs> all right let's get into the cool shit now shall we yes please yes, please. all right so uh as you can see there's no maker's mark on the back here uh but the bottom of our pant legs look really really good turn it around please and again nothing all that exciting until you look at the button. So I will take that now from you. Thank you. Big Mac. And I'm pretty Big sure Mac. these were a JC Penny line. And so to find vintage Big Mac jeans, uh, size 34, in great shape. So these are probably uh, 1970s, maybe even 60s. Uh, these will sell in the neighborhood of like $50 to $60. Nice. So keep your eyes peeled for a big Mac. And, and then Jason, how do you ship your jeans? I'm sure the, the audience would like to know. Boom. Padded mailers, $6.30 anywhere in the country. We got two pair of Levi's in, a, in one yesterday. Nice. All right, next we have vintage Levi's. And this, and I'll show it a little closer in a second, is the orange tab. And anytime you have other than the red, you definitely want to indicate there's orange and then there's gray and then there's purple, I think. The only bummer is this tag's a little beat up. But if you hold it straight up, please. As you can see, it's a nice dark rinse. Rinse. Yeah. The bottoms are in really good shape. Turn it around, please. And uh, as, as these jeans just by themselves, they would be worth maybe 20, 25 bucks. But there's a little bit something special going on on the inside. Ooh, okay. Bam. Oh. 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 
Oh, it's Big Mac Sears. Okay, sorry, maybe Big Mac is Sears. I knew it was one of those. Um, yeah, so they're lined. Perfect time of year to find lined jeans. And because they weren't a specific Levi's, and because this was torn here a little bit, I think I only bought them for like three dollars or four dollars. They were really cheap. Did they come lined? Sweet. It's kind of like that. It's done after, doesn't it? Yeah, look at that. It's all stitching right there, perfectly. Mm -hmm. See, look at all that stitching. Okay. Yeah. So keep your eyes peeled for line jeans, especially this time of year. You know, obviously it's getting colder. Not here, but I see. I see elsewhere it might be getting colder. Right. <laughs> all right. So here is the pair of pants I need help with, everybody. Yeah. Okay. All right. So look, look at this vintageness. vingeness. Look at these front pockets. How, how badass is this? Look at the stitching right cool. down. There. All right. I picture Jack Tripper wearing these. Yeah. Stacy pictures Jack Tripper wearing them. Now, turn it around. Look look at the stitching here. Woo! The pockets See? are right here. Yeah, and the pockets are up top. Like wow. right up top. Huh. And hold it straight up, please. Higher. Oh, Higher. Yeah, right. Very cool. Bell bottoms. But here's the bummer. They were hemmed up, weren't they? Here's the bummer. The only tag is care instruction. So it's got to be post-1973. No indicator of uh, maker at all. And really? here's what, here's what huh. their button looks like. So I'm calling out for help. Okay. This is the button on these jeans. Has anyone ever seen this button? Oh, come on, guys. Come on. I've got to help them out. <laughs> And the buttons on the pockets are the same. So this is definitely, whatever manufacturer this is, this is their button. And I, I, they're super cool. Wow, they hemmed a lot too. They hemmed a lot underneath. Look at that, Robin. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's because they're not wearing platform shoes anymore. So wait, people are th saying these are called dittos? All right, all right, all right. Oh, where's your paper? <laughs> so I paid uh, $4.75 for those awesome vintage jeans. Um, can I just go back to these real quick? Yeah. This says, water repellent finish should be reapplied periodically. Wow. Yeah, the tag says water repellent finish should be reapplied periodically. They're true cowboy pants. Yeah, well, these are the lined ones. Talk about how hot will these be? Water repellent and lined. You, your balls will sweat. I'll tell you right now. Not, not in Ohio. <laughs> All right. So here we are. More vintage. Now, these look a little more working class uh, vintage jeans. Hold them up, please. There ain't nothing exciting about them. They are uncuffed. Nice. Uh, in good shape, though. Dark wash. Spin them around, please. As you can see, again, nothing exciting about them, but here's what's exciting, the brand. The brand I never heard of before. Yeah. Made by Silver State Industries, Nevada, USA. Oh, very cool. Let me, let me see if I can show it. Uh, uh, there we go. Yeah. 38 by 36, that's a tall dude. But it's vintage denim in immaculate condition. It's amazing. And these are probably going to give me about $75. For sure. All right. So you've seen vintage denim, dark rinse. You've seen vintage denim with bell bottoms. Let's put it all together, ladies and gentlemen, to finish up on the most awesome find. Look at this fun design, okay? Wow. Spin it around, please. Okay, nothing all that exciting here. But you got your little got your little top pocket for your stash of weed right there. Okay. Uh, no side pockets, so that's weird. And then, but hold it up. You ready, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. True bell bottom. Look how wide these bell bottoms are. Nice. Nicely done. Right. So let me show you the brand. Shh. <laughs> you said the last thing. <laughs> It's Cheslin. Cheslin, okay. Size 42. Oh. 
I didn't find one pair. I found two. <laughs> all the same size. All, all bell bottoms. These are new old stock that have sat around forever. It's making the money, money, money. Oh, oh. Chris Nelson said Silver State Industries is run by the Department of Corrections. Oh, it's, yeah. pris it's prisoner pants. Yeah. All right, it's getting cooler, man. Oh, that's awesome. Good job, you guys. Good job. Ten pair of vintage bell bottoms. From the Department of Corrections. Get out. No, no. Department of Corrections was just one pair. Oh, just the one. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, the Get only out. bummer, the only bummer, there is a bummer. Each pair, I don't know if you're going to be able to see, each pair has like a sun mark where they've been folded for 40 oh, years. Yeah. Now, of course, you can, you can re-dye your jeans and stuff. Oh, you just wash them a little bit. Yeah. Sure. But to find, and, and guess what, Robin? Those were the cheapest. Those were $3.75 a pair. Yeah. 10 pair. Nice. So they're size 42s. I don't, I'm going to, I, I used to wear a 42. I'm currently in around a 38. So I will try them on uh, because I think if they fit me, uh, I will definitely, the rare time I will use a live model to show off something because and we're going to get them up tomorrow because vintage denim will sell any time of year, but we definitely want to market it towards the hippie costume or the seventies disco costume. Get your bell bottom disco jeans. Good job. Good job. Congrats, Jason. That's awesome. Yeah. So, you know, it was funny. We found vintage denim at the first savers. We, we went to five Sophia, my assistant to me. And, uh, we got to the second one, and I jokingly said, hey, go find some vintage denim. And then she came back with vintage denim. And then we got to the third one. I go, hey, go find some vintage denim. And we found it all five. So those came from a collection of five savers, and every place had at least one. And she, wow. I'm teaching her how to pick. She's getting pretty good, but she did pass all those bell bottoms. And so I, luckily I went back, and I only went back because I've been looking in my size because I, I lost weight, and I don't have any a lot of clothes right now. And so I was looking and I go, Ooh, what are these? And I pulled them out and she goes, Oh, I should have grabbed those. And I said, yeah, heck yeah. Vintage gem. She goes, well, there's a bunch more. <laughs> I'm like, Oh, I, I'll take all those. I love it. Chris says, get some sparkly trim in a fabric store and dress up those jeans. Hell no. The end, the end user can do that. I am not, I am not doing those. So keep your eyes peeled. You can feel vintage denim. You can see it. You know that that those designs, the, those stitching is not modern. And obviously the tags. Once you get into it, the tags give it away. A 2017 tag as opposed to a 1972 tag. They're radically different. You can definitely spot the difference, difference in vintage. So yeah. that's, that's the haul. That is Europe. That is vintage denim. And for those of you in the Secret Beach, I'm compiling this month's webinar, which is going to be all about Halloween costumes because Ooh, I hey. enjoy the hunt and the find and the selling of Halloween costumes almost as much as Christmas CDs. And we had a great Christmas CD webinar last year when we started the Secret Beach. So now it is how to find and what to find and how to sell uh, Halloween costumes. So that'll be coming up in a little over a week. Uh, on the Secret Beach. And speaking of, the Secret Beach is being reopened uh, in a couple weeks. So if you have not joined yet, um, it'll be open very, very soon. Well, Robin, thank you, my dear, for being a another awesome uh, uh, co-host. And uh, we did buy you something in Europe, and we're going to have to wait till we see each other again. And if you guys know Robin, and I've done a couple of videos already, when we give Robin a present, when we give Robin a present that is really, really her, and we record it because her reactions are out of this world, <laughs> this item will top them all. Oh my, really? Oh, Stacy so says, "Guaranteed." Now, unfortunately, the next time we'll see Robin, you won't be there, so we're gonna we'll, we'll definitely put it live on uh, Facebook or YouTube or something because. Oh, no. I found it. Well, then Robin's going to have to wait a longer time. Oh, well. All right. Sorry, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I don't mind. It's very fun when you find that perfect item for a friend or a family member or, or a significant other. You know there's going to be like, oh, I got one more thing to show. Shoot. You know they're going to get giddy. Uh, last thing, case for my uh, Doctor Who fans. Oh. This is a uh, puzzle. It's called a super kit. It's a construction kit. You pop it out and you build this little robot dude. I don't know shit about Doctor Who, so I don't know who this robot is. But uh, 
Amazon and selling for about 35 bucks. I picked it up for five dollars. So nice. Uh, Texas Gal Treasures, yes, you missed it all. I'm saying goodbye, but funny enough, Texas Gal Treasures, you tuned in just for Doctor Who, and I bought this thinking that you might be interested in it. So, Cyberman, so if you're interested, Margaret, <laughs> I actually bought it with, with Margaret in mind. Oh, I, I, I had uh, a couple of quick pictures. So here is the uh, car boot sale, just from a different angle. And this was uh, four racks of bras. Nice. Nice. <laughs> and this is all the people just shopping behind me. And we're finishing up. So uh the woohoo for Margaret, I'm guessing means that she wants Cyberman. So cool. Uh, so everyone, thank you for tuning in live. Please do me a favor, give me a thumbs up down below, hit the like button. And uh, if you don't like me, tell me really you don't like me. Give me two thumbs down, hit it twice. It'll tell me you really don't like me. And if you have not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe. Mom and I will be doing our show, Selling Past Your Expiration Date, being thrifty over 50 on Sunday. So, Robin, you're off the hook now. You don't have to do it anymore. Uh, <laughs> and I don't know what time yet. It's uh, going to be probably based on when the Cleveland Indians play because they're kicking ass. So, right. Sunday, Mom and I will be back. And I uh, already got a guest lined up for next Thursday's Thrifty Business, too. So, I'm kind of back on schedule, and we are rocking and rolling. So, thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend. Have a great night. And go find some ACCDs. You can make some money. Yes. And thank you to my lovely uh, helper back there. Bye. Bye, Stacey. Love you. <laughs> See you, everybody. Have a great night.